for Series 8 of All Gathered Up, the show that runs parallel to the Great British Sewing Bee and goes into detail of all the tools, techniques and skills that perhaps come up every episode. Um, and we go into that detail because we have time to do that. And we also have Master Taylor Couturier, Carol Elaine with us to help us get into that detail and teach us a lot more about those skills and techniques. Hey, Carol. Hi, Stuart. It's nice to be back. Isn't and it just? It really is. And I can't help but admire your amazing gingham shirt. You finished it. I have indeed. Yes. Let me do a little twirl. Oh, absolutely. Look, oh, the bias pocket. It's beautifully lined up. The yoke is, the, oh, you see my darts. Yep, I've got the darts. It looks like you've matched the pattern as well beautifully. Hey. Oh, yes, on the sides. Yeah. Stuart, congratulations. Really pleased. Really Fine pleased. job. Learned Fine a lot. Job. Um, mm -hmm. I, I can't wait to do another because uh, I didn't put any interfacing on this collar and it's much lighter and free. Yes. So good. I'm really pleased with that. But I'm oh. still getting those. Those, okay. tough, those tough D bits there, I've got to leave a bigger seam yeah. allowance again. I kept, okay, I well, maybe, um, maybe we'll do a tutorial on the collar stand and just how to line that up. We, we will fit that in, shall we? Oh, that would be great at some point. And that would be really good. But I've really enjoyed doing it. My plackets are in the right place. Mm -hmm. And because this was my second attempt, my sleeves fit because I, I, I measured it for me. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, I'm really Well good. done. And the gingham, well gingham was so easy to use, Carol, because it was yes. quarter of an inch lines. So when I'm folding over, mm -hmm. I've got my measurements in front of me. <laughs> You've got a strong graphic to follow. And even, I, I bet you found out when you're sewing your seams that you don't have to pin so much that you could just pull the top layer of fabric away and lay it down and see where you are. Yeah. And as we said, if you're moving a little bit ahead of yourself, the top layer is yep. slightly a bit ahead of the bottom layer. Then when you pass the press a foot forward, you're, it's going to line up naturally. Yeah. So, um, and, and you've got a little bit of, <laughs> did you notice a little bit of stretch in the gingham as well? Oh, so I did. Kind of, kind of good for my gym body. <laughs> <laughs> So let's go into episode one. Uh, for new people, we go into all the techniques uh, of whatever arises during each episode. And that might be a tool that comes up or it might be a particular technique that came up in one of the rounds, for example, the pattern round or the made to measure. And then as the season goes on, we then go into detail with all the sewers and what they make. But because this was episode one, it was full on. So we'll probably just uh, lightly chat about some of the things that we saw rather than going into each detail of every every sewer but weren't they a lovely group of sewers to be introduced to lovely group and and each series it seems like the standards getting better in a different way um we've got a lot of younger sewers that are extremely confident yeah. and um that, that that's interesting nice to have the generation you know across the board though um but no it's going to be it's going to be exciting one thing I notice is they seem to, bit, to blend very well. And I'm wondering if it's because they're 200 miles outside of London, you know, so they're a bit, bit more taken out, um, you know, of the city in, yeah. as it were. And I hope through the series, we're gonna see a little bit more about our world renowned um, fabric weaving, the, the great industry up in Leeds. And if they're there in the mill, I hope, I hope that we're gonna see some, some of that featured. It would be lovely because we know that that, that whole industrial world in, in Yorkshire, isn't it? It's um, uh, Bradford, isn't it? Keithley, Skipton, uh, all around there. I know from my point of view, the wool mills that were, that, yes. that was all there, wasn't it? We, oh, and, absolutely. And driving force of, mm -hmm. of, 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 of fabrics and wools, weren't we? Uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, Such a tradition. And then you go up to Scotland and you've got, you know, the Tweeds and the Harris and, and all that. And um, boy, the, the woolen is it, such a huge part of, well, well, certainly where I come from in the Savile Road tradition and the cloth merchants would just, there would be so many, there would be dozens and dozens yeah. of people coming and bringing their books in and refreshing the samples. There was so much to choose from. It, and, and it is, I know when we look back, it is sad to see those buildings. Oh, I think that was electricity. Oh, mm -hmm. 
No, you're still there. We're still on. Okay. Exciting. Um, uh, to, to see a lot of those buildings go as uh, as industry developed and we lost a lot of that making and, and a lot of those mills are empty now or they've turned into office blocks and, and housing. Um, but it was good to see Patrick championing the wool and then seeing wool used for episode one. So Absolutely. let's go into it then. The pattern challenge, the mini skirt. <laughs> yeah. Did that bring back flashbacks for you? Kind of the first garment you ever make, isn't it? It's it's that's where things start. But this was had that added, you know, complication of a patch pocket which had a piping around it. So that's a, it's a tricky maneuver, you know, understanding piping and how you sew it on and then taking it around a curve pressing everything back in getting getting a symmetrical pocket and then matching that with another one and having that level so there's a lot of you know intricate things about that garment and mm. uh only what two was it two four, two hours and 45 minutes to sew it which is two hours and 45 minutes yes now i pres oh, i presume it was chosen because the skirt technically it's a, a, if you don't include the pockets, it was a front and a back and a, and a, a zip and a facing. So yeah. you could argue that's quite an easy make. Yes, I would say, yeah, very easy. And so if it's two and two and a bit hours, then you need something which is quite simple to put together. Yeah. The main focus was going to be on the pockets and you knew that was going to take some time. Yeah. So that's the skill. That was particularly the skill, that the piping. Um, and, and that is, I've never done piping before. I've had a go. Uh, I was going to have a go. You tend to see it on, on cushions. That's the classic piping, I suppose, yes. isn't it? Yes, you um, see it on the interiors. And sometimes uh, more now, you see a flat piping, which we're going to talk about. You see flat piping is an extra detail on the inside of suits between the main fabric and the lining. You'll see a contrast yeah. bit of piping. Gives it a bit of flash. Oh, mm. so I suppose then from that point of view that the 12 sewers, a comfortable make within the skirt, not not too many pattern pieces, mm -hmm. and then the zip, which you think they would be comfortable doing. So a lot of the focus was then on that piping. Um, That's right. So um, I don't know, you're, you're, you're going to focus on the, uh, the piping for this uh, uh, technique for this episode, aren't you? I thought so. It, it was obvious, you know, to do a tutorial on that because piping is interesting. It just, it's a lovely embellishment. It adds a bit of contrast to a garment and it's just, it's simple. It's made by taking a bias strip of fabric and wrapping it around a cord and, wow. and, and, and that's it. You can get special feet for this. Um, I tend to use a zipper foot for most, it, for most everything. And I, and it's just use having a zipper foot on the machine also helped the contestants to put in the expose zip because they would have had to stitch quite close to the teeth on that. So they could just keep that foot on and, and, and do the, the, the more fiddly bits. Oh, brilliant. Well, Carol has prepared as she did last year, uh, some wonderful videos uh, explaining and giving advice uh, and a tutorial on, on how to do it. So mm -hmm. let's check out our first tutorial of the season and it's Carol showing us how to do piping. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to make a pocket like this with a piped edge. Okay, so I've made myself a pattern, just got a shape on the half and put a facing on. I've cut the pocket out of some warp and weft cloth. I'm working on the straight of the grain here and I've applied a non-woven fusible to the other side to give it some stability. I've cut a section of bias from a piece of lining that I had and um, it's wide enough to take on a much thicker cord than I'm using, which in this case is a three mil cotton cord. So the first thing to do is to take your piping cord and to sandwich it in your strip and to get the piping cord as close to the folded edge as possible. And to help you control this, you can use a set of pins just to get it lined as you go and estimate how much you're going to need to go around your pocket. Cut a little bit more because as you go around curves, 
you're going to have to ease in just a little bit more. You also want to make sure that you have enough to go through your facing at the top of the pocket. So once this is set up, you can give yourself a little bit more of a stable situation before you start sewing by putting in some tacking stitches. And this is good because the pins might get in the way as you're, as you're sewing, so you can set it up with a bit of basting cotton and then you can take out your pins. Okay, so now I'm going to cut a length and I'm going to show you how to apply it to half of the edge of this pocket. So now we have our piping cord encased in this piece of lining. It's all set up and it's ready to sew. Now the folded edge of this, which encases the cord, is on the left side of my piece of lining strip here. You can see that the foot I'm using, the foot is positioned to the right of the needle. So the piping cord is to the left, the foot is to the right of the needle. And depending how you want to maneuver your work, you can get a foot which is set up in the opposite way. Okay, So this foot has the, the press of foot here to the left of the needle. Okay, So it, you need both really, depending on what kind of job you're doing. So now we're going to set this up and we're going to begin to sew. Now I'm using a, a longer stitch. I'm at about three and a half on my industrial machine. You, in order to keep your work nice and even and consistent, you might want to give a little bit of a pull with your right hand with these fingers here, okay? Just to make sure the needle is as close to the piping cord as possible. Um, and as you go along, now we, we don't have our tacking thread, we don't have our pins, but you could just control this with your hands. Pretend your nails here are your pins. And just keep going. And let's have a look at what we've done so far. You can see what we've got here. We've got our three mil piping cord nicely sandwiched in. And then you can see that that is going to be trimmed and put on the edge of the pocket. So I'll finish this section and then we'll apply it to the pocket. So now I've completed the section of piping to finish off this pocket. Um, one thing to consider is your seam allowance. I've allowed one centimeter seam allowance. So that means a centimeter from my stitching line here to the edge of the folded fabric. Here's how I like to set that up. I take a centimeter guide. Now I'm using my pattern master and a sharp piece of chalk to mark the seam allowance in. You can also use a tape measure to mark your centimeter, or you can use a steel hemming guide. Whatever works best, but now I'm going to trim this so that when I sew it, the centimeter is going to be on the edge of the fabric and my seam allowance will be following this line of stitching. So I've, my piping strip is now all prepared with a centimeter seam allowance, and I'm going to show you how I apply this to just half of the pocket. So give yourself a little bit of lead room up at the top here. Position your needle as close to that stitching line you can as you can. And you can also just to give yourself a little bit of security as you're sewing this around, set things up with a, a pin every now and then. Now we're sewing on the straight now, so you don't need to add any additional ease. You can see that I'm not exactly pushing the piping in, but I'm just encouraging the needle to get as close to that line of stitching as possible. And this is where the hands do come in handy. You don't run over any pins. Now we're on the straight, so we don't have to make too many accommodations, but as we get to the curve, we're going to be, have to set this up with a little bit of ease, not too much, because then the, the cord, the piping end, will come out a little bit thicker. You can see what's happening as I put some ease in. You can see what's happening. The casing around the piping is, is starting to expand because it's on the bias. So it's becoming bigger. 
And if you don't stay close to the edge, then you're going to get a wider piping as you go around the curve. Now this takes nothing more than practice. And I've given us quite a sharp curve here, which is challenging. But I'm going to show you how you can use your pins and your hands and just go slow and use this, your left hand, to kind of control the needle. Walk the needle if you have to. Go slowly and work ahead. See where we're heading here. Staying very close to the piping edge. When you get, and you can see what's happening, if you get a little bit too close, what happens is the needle might catch onto the cord itself. And you don't want that to happen. But the thing you do want is you want to maintain an even curve. And if you don't, you're going to get sections that break and look angular. So now when this is done, if you're not happy, you can always give it another pass. You know, that is allowed. But you can kind of check your work and see how it's how it's coming along. Now this looks okay, but you can see something's gone a little bit wonky just here, and I think I've just caught in the piping cord. But that's just something for you to work on and try. Now, before we go to, the, to pressing this, I'm going to say that you need to clip this. Now, I'm not going to clip too close now. I'm just, this is just to show you the next step. Because when you get to the iron, it's going to be a lot easier to fold these in succession. Okay? So there we are. So now we're going to go over to the press board and we're going to show you the finished pocket. So now you can see our finished pocket in the reverse side and how I've pressed it after I've clipped close to that stitching and I've pressed it around the curve and I've allowed each segment that I've cut into to overlap slightly on both sides. This side I've gone that way, this side I've gone that way, but what it does is it gives a really nice flat finish. There's your pocket. You can give it a final press, use a cloth, and there we are. So this is an example of how to use a piping cord, but there's another thing you can do to get some contrast and some embellishment, and that is by installing a flat piping. Now, it just so happens that I'm relining a jacket. And there was already piping installed, but I've taken it off, I've given it a good press, and I've restitched it on. So this jacket came with a flat piping contrast, but you can add it to your bespoke garments by making your own flat piping. And it's the same thing as we prepared for our corded piping um, by cutting a strip of bias and folding it in half and giving it a press. So you can prepare your own. And then as I was working on this jacket, of course, I removed the old lining. I made sure I had the care label intact. I set up some notches here and there so that when I put this back together, I can control the ease that was originally in the lining. And then I will then go on to cut my new lining pieces. To install your lining with this contrast piping, you would just prepare your new piece of lining, put your raw edges together, and you can set this up with a set of pins, or you can tack, you can baste it with a machine, but what I want to show you here is how much control you have over the amount of contrast that you end up with. So the lining pieces is set up, your flat piping is in place, and now you can determine with your seam allowance just how much contrast you want and you, what you do want in your finished project is that you have a consistent width of your flat piping. So this is why I took the piping off, I pressed it flat, and then I trimmed it so that it was exactly a half an inch or five-eighths of an inch or whatever. And then when you put in your pipe, your 
lining piece if you want a little bit less contrast to show you can just take a bigger seam allowance see and then you've got less so there you are there's a few examples of what you can do with your piping add a contrast or that's outside or something on the inside using a corded piping or a flat piping and by the way when you're going to stitch this pocket on you can use this ditch which is right in the middle you know where the piping stitching line is and you can use that to sew your pocket on so you would then be putting your pocket on invisibly just like that wonderful mm -hmm. i can i can see how that curve because obviously pockets can be that you know my my, po my pocket here is quite angular but yeah. if you've got if you've got a sharp curve as you were saying on your your tutorial mm -hmm. that's going to be harder to ease that round isn't it you're gonna have to go a bit steady yeah. with that that's right and whenever you get a point where like if you were uh, sewing piping around a, a 90 degree angle say as we talked about in the tutorial, you just have to clip into that point where right. your sewing direction changes. Yeah. So when you're working around a curve, you know, it's more of an even clipping of the of the piping, and 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 then, and then it kind of guides itself around staying in the seam allowance, as it were. And when we look at the contestants with their piping, were you, were, were you seeing uh, evidence of, of that, of, oh, th yes, they're, they're, I can see where they've struggled, perhaps. I know we didn't see too many close-ups, but when, we, when they were showing off um, the, the finished sort of catwalk of them, did you spot anything there? Oh, absolutely. I mean, some, some people had a, a real tricky time with it, you know. Some people sewed not, not up to the piping cord, but they sewed far enough away where you could see the the make of the cord itself so you could see the stitching line uh, from the manufacturer and then they were outside that line um yeah there was some it, it, it is tricky and and everything that happens when you rush and you don't prepare it all showed up yeah well um, <laughs> and that's the nature of the program isn't it that, that's exactly. the time limit for you yeah. isn't it yeah i i felt sorry for i think it was was it steve who who ran out of he he did he didn't cut his piping long enough oh yes it was that too short such, yeah that's such a disaster but you know it, it was yeah. it is it angela who made her own piping yes now they obviously have the choice to use pre-made piping so you didn't have to worry about putting the cord in and making your bias binding like you showed us on the video yes. it was already pre-made and sewn in mm -hmm. but angela made her own now that's impressive isn't it it is impressive and I think that's one, if you know what you're doing and if you've worked with piping and now you're in a competition, it's one of those things that you can do to get yourself an edge yeah. in the process. So she, she capitalized on that did, and, and did a really, really fine job of it. Well, because how long would that take? I'm just trying to work that out process. You've got to cut the bias. Mm -hmm. You've then got to put the cord in You've got then got to fold over, as you say, get the zipper foot and then sew that in. So what's that going to be? Is that 15 minutes at least? I'd say 15, 15, 20 minutes could be a half an hour. Yeah, sure. Depending on how, if, if it's, if your fabric is tricky to work with, and as we saw in the tutorial, you can set it up with pins, then yeah. you can tack it. So that those are a couple of extra steps before you even put the two together, your, your piping and your fabric together. Um, so yes, yeah, it would eat up a lot of time. Now, something I wanted to ask you on your tutorial, um, I've just got a bit of paper here. You That's you it. cut your pocket out to, and you have the facing included because obviously we know that facing is going to get turned over. Yes. So you sewed your your um, piping up the edge. So when you turn your facing down, you get a nice edge of piping there. Yes. It seemed to me when I was watching some of the bees, some of the piping seemed to be going that way. What was actually going I, on there? Do you know? I noticed that as well. It, it looked a bit awkward to me. And I think they just, they were instructed on the pattern to just turn the piping in, you know, make a 90 degree turn oh. and then put the facing over, which left a top yeah. of the piping. It left that, like you know, showing it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, so I couldn't, quite, I couldn't kind of work out 
how 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 it was made or what was going on there because some 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 of them were more curly or curved rather mm -hmm. than it going that's like right a, like a hook over the back yeah i wondered if you were going to ask me about this so i actually brought the pattern oh look at that so i don't know if you can see it but the side of the pocket goes up and then here's the facing line i see it i took a little turn in so i've taken off about four or five millimeters yeah so that when you turn this around um it actually it actually goes inside the I edge see. Yeah. and that that means that, that the outside is going to be a clean edge and you're not going to have two rows of piping you know fighting okay. each other so and, and then you'll get that nice the piping should literally go up and over or look like it just stops yes yeah. But it doesn't stop before the fold line. No, no. It car it carries on. It's part of the top edge of the yeah. pocket, and it doesn't stick out. And you're right, that looked a bit awkward. Yeah. So that was that was per instructions, I'm sure. Um, it when you saw the the, the bees, this is our, our first time seeing them, and I know they had a lot of footage to put in. We had a lovely little bit about the history, uh, uh, which was great seeing that about the mill and, and leads and, and everything. Um, but um, you, you could see some of the bees struggling with that and all you felt for them. And then, of course, Mitch, uh, he was having problems with his machine and, and the thread and the big bobbin on there or the, the cone. It looked difficult for him, didn't it? It seemed like everything went wrong. If it was, it was just Murphy's law from start to finish. If something could get messed up or fouled up or accident or it, it was going to happen, it did. And it was a, it was a really frustrating string of you know, catastrophes for him. I, I really felt bad, and I, it's it's difficult when the red light is on and the competition takes takes you know it, it starts for real. Um, I always think they should just do one episode where everyone just finishes and nobody gets cut. And I said that. Yes, I said that on our other show. You yeah. feel it's bit, they should do like what they do with Strictly and have the first week where they just have fun making. They can get their nerves so they can make mistakes and but not worry about it and 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 try and enjoy it more. Well, exactly. I mean, it was it, there was some nerves in in the in the sewing room. You could tell, and it affected the performance. You know. Oh, I and as we always say, I can't even begin to imagine sewing uh, uh, under that pressure and with someone chatting to you, with cameras in you, or or maybe a producer trying to get the right shot. <laughs> that is, that's hard. Exactly. That is hard. Exactly. Full, full, hats, full off, hats off to them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what do you think about in that round the the choices of wools? Because they had loads of wools in the haberdashery. There, there were some wonderful colours. And um, their choices of piping, mm -hmm. colour wise. Yes, there was some uh, which had a lot, uh, really too much going on. You know, the check pocket and the yellow zip and all that. That was just <laughs> that was a bit too bold. I really liked. I think it was Marnie who did a kind of an orangey and grey tweed, and yes. then had a dark uh, dark slate grey piping. Yeah, like that was really handsome. Yeah. That one. Um, and then, then a few others, of course, Angelos was very nice. Yeah. Um, there was one, I think they said it looked a bit Chanel. Uh, oh, yes. yes. I think that was that was a, a green with a white piping. Yeah, that was also very, that was really striking as well. It, do you like working with wool? Is it nice to work with? It's so beautiful to sculpture. It takes steam very well. It's forgiving. Um, you know, it takes ease very well. It, stre it just sculptures beautifully. And um, and then you've got such a variety. Yeah. Um, no, it's just lovely to work with. It's, it's wool is the real thing. Oh, I, well, it, and, and I'm in, in my wool shop, so it was lovely seeing it used. And um, I, I've used Harris Tweed before, and, and it's just when I made my um, uh, Baker's Boy cap from last season from uh, oh, yeah. with, with Adam, it, it is nice. And, and you get so crisp when you when you steam it and then you get your clapper on it and it makes. Oh. Yes, you see, it's it's just fabric really easy to sculpture yeah. and uh, to take ease. Well, well, let's look at the the the, the results of that round. Mitch was um, twelfth out yeah. of the twelve sewers, and Steve eleventh. Yeah. A lot in the middle. Uh, we won't talk about those. We'll go up the other end. Uh, Marnie was second 
and mm-hmm. uh, Angela was first, and it was uh, it was a it was a close call there. They looked both beautiful. Do you think you can perhaps guess why the judges went with Angela rather than Marnie? Or I think that. Angela's made her own piping, right? And the effect of her finished piece was it was very striking. Yeah, you know, a blue, a jet solid, and a print. They they went well together, um, but it was it, and it was more of an eye catching garment. Where Marnie's was a classic. It's it's certainly a garment I would wear. Marnie's before oh, I would it looked wear lovely. Angela's it, because yeah. it was really tasteful. Yeah. It was neutral. It looked like you could take that skirt absolutely anywhere yeah. and it would yeah. work. So, yeah, from a merchandising point of view, Marnie, I would have chosen. But I think Angela came out ahead because of the, you know, she wasn't afraid to coordinate mm. two cloths, which were different, but went very well together. And but then she took that extra step. What a, a smashing first round, because to me, Absolutely. I'm already going, wow. Yeah. Um, that, they were they were good those two but actually i i can't really the, the rest in that the, well the the other eight not other ten eight of them were like wow yeah. and i'm They're, already thinking the standard is high already exactly and what did you think when they showed that whole uh, panoramic view of all oh. the skirts together was that lovely it w- wasn't it just and that's yeah. that's a good thing about the program celebrating all their the, the creations and you see them there yeah w- was wonderful was wonderful absolutely well wonderful well i hope that helps everyone especially with the tutorial there we're going to move on to talk uh, briefly about the the second uh, and third round so the the good old transformation challenge 90 minutes um uh, of loungewear <laughs> that's left over from the the, the pandemic um yeah. uh, uh, they had to choose one top and one bottom to make a glamorous going out out <laughs> yes. something for yes. a party or or, or or something like that mm-hmm. um a fun round i know what we think about this round but it's 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 a different part of the brain so it might challenge the sewers who are more creative because it is isn't it you, you either follow you're either good at following a pattern or you're you're just actually really creative i don't know whether do you have both that, or is normally one person better at another another skill i'm not sure well, this this round certainly brings out that fact yeah. if they do and i think it, it's um it's, a, it's an odd round to, to sit through um because the time is so short the brief is so wide yeah. And um, for you to top for going out, you know, and it's going out where? And as I said, we have two di- different generations. So the person that won was a child of the 80s, when you have people that weren't born yet. Yes, you know? I know. <laughs> so <laughs> trying to interpret that. So that, so that, that was interesting. But um, um, I think it's part of, part of the judging process is to throw something in there, which brings out that those other skills, the other skills you know, yeah. and their own design their own uh, ability to maneuver different fabrics and to rig them up mm. so that they you know using parts of fabric uh, garments is quite fun you know chi chi's top the backless top it was she used the waistband wasn't it that just was, that was a charmer it was such a gem because that actually that was one of my favorites because it it filled the, it fit the brief and also it, it, the fit of it was was really almost it was immaculate and she had kind of a detached sleeve it was really complicated what she did what she pulled off much more complicated i thought than the garment that won mm. which didn't resemble a top that i would go out and dance in because there was so much of that sweatshirt fabric. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. going to be a bit cumbersome. You'll get all. Um, so that, yeah, that, that's what I thought. But my favorite in that round was Jill's. But it's because that's the sort of thing I like. It's, it's a classic, oh, that's purple. pure garment. Yeah. I thought that was just beautiful, just so well done. Yeah. And, um, but not as blingy or not as, you know, obvious and loud and shouty and no and that's the thing some of them because they have the jersey there isn't really much else 
to mm. do with it in that time. So maybe that's where the creativity of some people go, well, let's just get some habby and, and put some <laughs> frills on. Exactly. And some people exactly. did, did, did do that. But then, as we said, it's it's a nice round to give some sewers um, who, who have different um, abilities uh, and some some are good at following the pattern. I remember I think a couple of years ago we had a teacher and she was just great at following patterns because that's just how perhaps teachers work whereas some students are, they they have got um, that, that they can probably find patterns quite restrictive whereas mm. this is free you can really see a you know if you're if you're that way inclined you can yes. design a way can't you and create yeah. and snip. No absolutely. Yes. How, how would you feel if you could choose if you were going to do a round uh, what would you would you be pattern or would you be creative and snip and, and drape and do all that sort of thing I love draping and I often I turn to that first now instead of the flat pattern design oh right so um, as long as I have a good idea of the figuration of the person that I'm working with and I have a mannequin which is close to that yeah. I like just draping the stand with the toile, just starting and cutting shapes. And then from there, I actually think you can save a lot of time rather than trying to, you know, just draft something yeah. flat on paper. Um, so I think I would be probably the draper, probably the more throw cloth at oh, really? it. Oh, really? Try that, anything. And, um... That would scare me to death. I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be like, oh. Oh, what am I going to do? I'm going out? Am I going to go out to a wedding? Am I going out to a party? Oh, oh! And I would spend too long choosing that, and then I'd be like, "Oh, where do I cut?" You know. Oh, I know. That... I know. And, and <laughs> how about how about when Mitch said, "Well, I need another idea here. Um, it's gonna. I'm just gonna get the scissors, and it's gonna be now." And, and Sarah just thought, "Oh, this is this is I... so reckless," you know. Yeah. Um, but he wasn't, you know, he's obviously that kind of a person. He understands sculpture and shape mm. and how to arrive at something. And actually, let's be fair, he made a much improved situation mm. by making a cutaway garment yep. and then you know, trying to bind the seams off, but uh, kind of fell short of that. But, but technically, what he was trying to do was successful. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I felt a bit bad for him, really, when when they said when they were judging it, it felt a bit Dennis the Menacey, and it's like, oh no, come on. <laughs> I tell you what, I it's only week one, and already I'm I'm missing the technical language that would be helpful, and, yeah. and I think the people need people need at home, and the sewists need in the sewing room. You know, there's a there's ways to say things, and you we need to call things by their right names if we're going to help people. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that we can get more of that. I don't know that we will, but I'm hoping we can. No, I, I, I agree. But yes, you're, you're right. That when, when we hear technical language used, it's nice because I like hearing it. It's, a, it's, our, it's our craft, after all. But it's also nice to then go, oh, I've, ne I've never heard of that word before. What's that? And then open a conversation about that technique word, you know, or that the vocabulary within your subject. Exactly. And when you're critiquing something which this is it's what this is all about yes. um i don't know how they point score and because we're talking about the transformation challenge it's be, it would be interesting to know how they score that because how is something over here different from something over there they've both started with the same brief they've got the same raw materials um the brief as we said is quite wide mm. i'm sure you've been a teacher and you probably know what would happen if you gave 30 kids a wide brief and said, okay, off you go. Oh, and it, yeah, you see, yeah. and it's not been walked through and no. it's not been planned. So it's, it's no wonder you get such an array, but um, when you hear things like, oh, well, that's wobbly or that doesn't look very good. Mm. Those aren't things that you can hang your hat on those. You don't know why something isn't aligned correctly. And you see, we, We'll do that, though. We'll, we'll have to, I think, in our in our rebuttal here. Indeed. Yes. Yeah. And, so and that's why it's so good doing that, because we do have the time to do that. And we've got the conversation flowing. But I still I think you're right. They could like this strictly. They can still when they judge, they can say, I saw this. I saw this technique. And they do do that on strictly. And they they, they put those words in. Uh, hence why you've got four judges. So you get four different 
opinions. And you it? know that you're getting one point off for this or two yeah. points off for that. Yeah, good point. Um, so the standings for that round, uh, Mitch, oh, bless, 12. Um, Angela, down the other end. So this yeah. is where I was saying creative type or pattern type. So perhaps exactly. um, struggled yeah. with that one. Yes. And yeah. then at the top, we saw someone new, Man Yi, uh, second. Yeah. And then yes. Marnie again first. <gasps> so her second one where she's in the top two. So she's starting to stand out already. You're thinking, oh, she's got a lot yeah. of skills. And she's, she's very at ease with herself, isn't she? She's great at conversation. She's got a lot of humor about her. She seems very settled and very, you know, capable of where she's at. Was, was Man Yi, Stuart, was that the one with the fringe? off the side. Yes, the tassel. The lovely bottles. And then yeah. she, she worked out a drawstring. Yeah. Uh, which was in a loop. That was a real prize, don't you think? Uh, definitely. And so original. Yeah, yes. Um, like so, uh, and was um, later on, um, yes, well, and I, that's where you start to see Manny start to come through because she had the organza, which is what oh, we yes. like. We yeah. will, will now about talk uh, talk yeah. about. So made yeah. to measure round. Um, uh, the, it was to create a wrap dress, a dress for any occasion, um, mm -hmm. as in um, I presume that meant as an occasion uh, for a wedding or an occasion for um, a party, not for any occasion. As in, you can wear the same dress for all. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yes, yeah, so it's a tea dress, tea dress yeah. wedding. Any out, you know, out, outdoor yeah. event or even a business meeting, you know, and, and lots of options for this. I th is that right? When if you took the basic dress, they had lots of options to perhaps, you know, f feature to to make specific. So like you can make you could change the arms. Is that right? Yes, you could. There's a lot of different sleeve variations um, from sleeveless to long to the flutter cuffs we saw and then also the hemline variation. Um, and then I don't know how much control they had, but the, the ones that were easier to, um, you know, to fit the models had a higher wrap, didn't they? Yes. So they, yeah. they covered more of the cross chest. Yeah. Um, and they, also the, cool. the fabric I thought was really interesting because some people chose a cotton fabric. So it was, it was more a perkier dress and, a, and the silhouette was more sculptural. Where if they chose a knit, then you got that really lovely flow and fluidity. Yeah. So you had two different, it, it, it was contrasting with the use of cloth. I loved this round. I, I was getting more and more excited as the episode went on because they were just looking stunning. I was like, I don't know, I don't know who, who can <laughs> win here because yeah. they, I was like, that's a nice design, that's a nice design, that they're doing really well. So it, it that was a good choice, I felt, for episode one, made to measure. Absolutely. It was a great fashion show at the end, you know, because yeah. as you say, they all looked really good. Yeah. I thought that, I thought there was a similarity with Steve and Mitch's pattern choice. Did that, did you catch that? They had uh, a... I didn't a, myself, no, but they like, could have been a kimono-y type dress with, with a kind of a cap sleeve. Oh. Steve had a turn up and yeah. Steve used linen. And I thought that was just enchanting. Yeah. The, the, the three colors of linen that he chose. I thought his came up really well. Mitch's was much the same, except something went a little bit wrong with the height. Oh, um, yes. In, yeah. in, the, in the, the under, the over wrap looked, and somehow came out a little too short and I don't would know. Would that have been in the cutting when he was cutting out originally or during the sewing? Could have been, or he, maybe he just, it looked like he top stitched a hem, which was uh, like two inches. Ah. So I think he, maybe he hemmed that a little too, too high. I don't know, but it looked like for, for, for all the 12, it, well, that was interesting that the two chaps chose very similar patterns. Yeah. Hmm. But it, I, as they were making them, it was, it, it, you know, it was great to watch, but that, that catwalk in that building, mm -hmm. there was a definite walk, wasn't there yes, as well? Yes, yeah. Um, as they were coming down, 
I, I, I was just overwhelmed with Jill's. There was just something about that look. I know it was all yes. said about the Duchess of Cambridge, but it just, it seemed to fit the model stunningly well. But that, that just, it just seemed so chic and simple, but yet incredibly elegant. So I yes. was, I have to say, I was thinking with that one. What did you so think? So was I, absolutely. And I think this is what we're going to see from Jill. It, you know, she did that lovely plum, um, velour top in the transformation challenge yeah. and it was it was a, a piece that absolutely stood on its own yeah. without all the fuss and bother and the you know bows and everything this wrap dress was much the same it's a perfect choice of fabric to the design yeah. and when I saw the picture of it I thought that doesn't really sing and dance the picture yeah. because it has a three-quarter sleeve and it, it just didn't look good as a drawing but that was all chattered once you saw it on the model. Yes. I could imagine her wearing that and turning up to the tennis or sure. going out to yes. um, uh, punt on a, on, a, on, a, on a boat in Cambridge. <laughs> and, and, didn't, and didn't it wrap beautifully? It didn't it just, there was just something yeah. about it. I mean, they, they were all wonderful, but um, uh, yes. Um, so let's go on to um, Man Yi and the organza. What, what do you think? She, she obviously perhaps has used organza before or she I guess put, I, I'll go yes, for it. of course and maybe she just likes to use that fabric and yeah. again this was her opportunity to really show and excel her skills so she chose you know an underslip and then this yeah. wrap dress in this see-through absolutely featherweight cloth I thought it was a, a really good choice but again that dress had a completely different look about it it was outward, it was get head height, mm. where Jill's just kind of draped, just, just dripped beautifully, yeah. Um, yeah. for lack of a better word. Um, the one I really liked um, was the one who used her gran as a inspiration, and it was an African print. Oh, Annie. It was Annie. Yes. And I, the... Um... The African print, it was floral, but big, big floral. It was sort of punchy, purpley, orangey colour, wasn't it? On a white base, I think. Yeah. That was my favourite from. And, and she had on a bias frill, which was quite long. And it, it, it went from the waist all the way down oh. to the hem and around and back up again. So that was tricky to do. Yes, a ruffle, the ruffle head. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, th they had time to practice. I think th th we don't really know the format, but I don't think they're in a hotel anymore like they were a couple of seasons ago. They're, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because we're out of COVID. So I think they were going home. So I think they've had the week to practice again. Mm -hmm. It's filmed at the weekend and they have Monday to Friday to then practice making the made to measure I see okay so, so, so technically we might see this season better or 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 yes better finished makes yes. because hopefully they'll have they'll have that chance to see fabric feel fabric um, mm -hmm. and then practice them because I think that was one thing we didn't see last season because they couldn't practice or they had time to practice but not as much because they were in a room and it might have been difficult Sure. So, but a week to practice, you can almost, you know, memorize what you're doing. It's yeah. like your second run at this Absolutely. shirt. You know exactly what, you know, you know what you're doing. The next one is just going to fall off the machine. You know, it'll Indeed. just, it'll sew itself. Won't and it? I think, I think as the season progresses, I think we'll start to see those who have practiced or who feel certainly more comfortable. I think that will start to come across, but when you look at those dresses uh, on on episode one, week one, you think, "Ooh, uh, yes." No, yeah. no one stood out hugely as being. Uh, you know, sometimes you get some really good ones and and a couple of middles, and then all oh, these three might be going out in the next two or three weeks. That wasn't really the case, other than Mitch. Um, it it's a big talented bunch. It certainly is, and it, you know. Mitch, for, for, for all the, the hassles that he had to overcome, his, his wrap dress was, was, was pretty good. You know, they, oh, they all were. And again, it was a great fashion show and such a variety. You know, that one that was, I think it was Angela's, that spring green. Color. Oh, that was beautiful, wasn't it? What uh, a dazzler. 
Yeah. When it came down the catwalk, it looked so fresh. Yes. With a, like yes. a bit of yellow in it and, and the white base. A lovely fabric. Lovely and it's, fabric. it's lovely when you see something that just fits, sits so well in the season. Exactly where we are right now. Yes. You think, oh, I want that. I want to wear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now. <laughs> now, what if you were making this, would you you go for a light cotton or or you would you make it according to the fabric and you know how it sits or would you go for a, a jersey i would definitely go for a jersey right and um because it has that that weight you yeah. know it just falls so beautifully and the drape is uh, you know just so effective and um probably i would choose yes yeah, so a jersey and i would i would um elaborate with a ruffle mm -hmm. with a nice long ruffle that maybe not so biased okay you know that it fluttered but just yeah. just a, it, just a hint of a ruffle it um, reminded me very much of your on our last series of so what and you were working on a commission weren't you i think we called it the bond dress that was jersey and it was long wasn't that's it? right yes absolutely yes yes and and easier to control and it's 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 I don't know it's easier to work with but it's that bounce that it has yeah. and when you have a bigger a-line skirt it just gives that that just that little trampoline effect when you're wearing it the other thing I would do is I would have an even hemline I don't think that the curved hem the asymmetric hems work as well in that style but um and I think Jill's was an even hemline if I remember uh, I think so. Yes, it, okay. yeah, right, came down. Yes, yes, and it was because yeah, if the Duchess of Cambridge is wearing it, I mean, <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> well, I'm going oh. to look what I've got. I thought, do you know what? As we watch it, I get so inspired to sew, and I know you're sewing every day as part of your, <laughs> your job. Um, but I went on to sew over it, um, a, a, a shop in London, and I'm going to make a wrap dress. And look what I did today. I cut out the pattern pieces. What about the bodice? Do you have the bodice? Can I, I see? Do. Ah, there we go. Okay. Oh, and it's so it's got a... All okay. right, excellent. Oh, go for it. Yeah, I'm going Brilliant. to make that. But I, I was, I was, I think I was humming and hiring over fabric and I've got some poplin cotton here in the shop and I thought poplin would be light and fluffy, but I don't know whether you can yes. see up there, I've got some Jersey that hasn't really sold. Um, and there's a solid oh. gray, there's a solid gray Jersey at the top there. So I think after go you just it. said that you would do Jersey knit, I think I'm going to go for a Jersey knit. There you go. And does it have a facing on it? Does it have a, um, along that front edge, uh, is there a facing piece and how wide is it? No, there's no facing at all. It's literally, it's, there's hardly any pattern pieces. There's like six okay. pattern pieces. I've okay. got A, um, there's my back bodice. Right, right. So I've got a cut, a pair. Uh, cut a pair, cut a pair, mm -hmm. and then it's the sleeve. Yes. Oh, so it's a flutter sleeve. Oh, okay. is that what? Yeah. See, I don't know. See, this is all the vocabulary, you see. This is That's great. That's it. That's it. Is that a puffy sleeve? Do they want you to put elastic in the bottom, or is it just a butterfly? No, no, it's just a butterfly. You don't have a picture. Okay. No, I've okay. done that. annoying. I, um, no, it's, oh, I might have. Oh, I'll, I'll put, I'll let it one in so everyone could see it. Okay. Um, <laughs> it, it, because it was a, a download, it came. Um, they, they just sent me the pattern pieces because I asked for a paper because I thought I'm not going to print it out and stick it all together. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll pay for it to be printed out on A0. Yes. Um, yeah. But the only thing it did say in the pattern, if I, I, I need to just read this to you, I stay tape. Yes. Okay. So I, I don't know what that is. So can I, can I do it with something else or do I actually need to buy some stay tape? Well, there's a number of the ways. This is why I asked you if you had a facing or not, oh. because they're expecting you to probably just overlock the edge. I see. They did say put that some, in the pattern. Yep. Put some stay tape on, maybe overlock the stay tape onto it, and then just turn it back and then top stitch it. 
Uh, but I'll show you some ways that are a bit more elegant, a bit neater, and and it looks as as nice on the inside as it does on the outside. Oh, I so see. I'll, we'll do a few tricks on maybe how to finish a raw edge with a you know, bias binding. We went through that with our t-shirts. Oh yes. And yes. under stitching, so you could do that, um, or you could use an iron-on. You could use a fusible bias tape. Yeah. And then you could turn it over just an eighth of an inch and then another quarter. So just to give a really oh, I beautiful see. couture finish on I it. Get you. Yeah, so there's, yeah. yeah, so because there's no facings, there's no inner bit, it's literally the stay tape is, is, is dealing with that raw edge hem then, is it? That's, that's it, that's ah. it. They're probably just giving you a centimeter to finish. That's, oh, that's it. exactly that's what it said, a centimeter, yeah. Yes, and you don't want to use a stay tape, which is on the straight, because you've got a curve, you've got a curve around the neck. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so whatever you do has to accommodate and go and bend around that curve and look elegant and match the curve. So you oh, don't boy. want to use the stay tape on the straight. So oh, we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll get you a really nice finish on that neckline. Oh, look All at right. that. All right. <laughs> well, see, Episode one has inspired me. Has it inspired you? Let us know in the comments what you liked and who stood out. Who stood out? Uh, Marnie stood out to me and Jill stood out to me. Did you have anyone for you, Carol, that stood out? We thought, oh, I can't wait to see more of them. I can't wait to see more of what Jill's going to do because she has that lovely classic eye. She's a very pure seamstress and um, she doesn't around with things she just makes very classic very sturdy garments fabulous sad to see mitch go especially on week one but as always we know the show format someone does have to leave um i hope you'll come back and join us for next week it's sportswear and I think we'll, we'll probably see some new technical fabrics yeah we might see a little bit of scuba type fabrics oh, boom. um and then we'll have to insert quite a sturdy zip if it's an outdoor piece. So that, that, that'll be a, a challenge. Well, whatever techniques come up, we'll, we'll try and focus in on one of them and then give more detail on that for next week's show. Hope you enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments so we can keep that conversation going forward. Otherwise, Carol and I will see you next week for week two of All Gathered Up. Thanks everyone. Bye.